And it's, it's just like Trump and Russia. Have you heard the latest about Mueller, the Mueller investigation? It, by the way, this was predicted, too. Now, I was not the lone voice predicting this, but I was one of a few. That Mueller was going to eventually start... Look, I, this is months ago that I warned you about this, by the way. That Mueller and his gang are going to start looking into Trump's finances pre-2016. And I remember the day that I made this prediction. The faces on the other side of the glass contorted in anger and disbelief. My staff, my highly overrated staff, was livid when I made this prediction because they knew it was right. And lo and behold, it has been announced. Well, it's not been announced. It's kind of been leaked by Gloria Borger and the gang at CNN. And the only reason they would know, the only way they would know is that the Mueller gang is leaking it to them. In fact, we can play for you the audio sound bites on this. We will start here with, uh, da, 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 let me find it. Yep. Audio soundbite number six, number seven, and number eight. Here we go. This illustrates it to a T. The Mueller gang is not going to quit until they find something that they can nail Trump with. I am reliably told that Mueller has not given up on the whole collusion angle. The conventional wisdom is that there isn't any evidence that Trump colluded with Russia, and so Mueller is moved on now to trying to prove obstruction of justice. That Trump has stood in the way of justice being done in the United States. But the intel that I have from deep state sources tells me that Mueller has not given up the collusion angle. That Mueller's not given up any angle. There's no way he's given up any angle. Trump remains the target. Trump began as the target. Trump remains and will always be the target until they end this nefarious thing. And they're not going to end it until they've got ample data and evidence, quote unquote, to do great damage to Trump. There's no question that this is not going to abate any at all. It's not going to fall by the wayside. Mueller and his gang are not going to lose interest. The media is not going to lose interest. And so it's now reported that Mueller, and I, this is months ago I made this prediction. Cookie, don't, don't bother finding it here. I've got enough to do without spending a lot of time in the archives. But I remember it was late last year, I think, that I predicted that Mueller was going to go for Trump pre-presidential financial investigation. And lo and behold, it looks like what Mueller wants to focus on is Trump's Miss USA pageant and its relationship to Russia. You know, he owned it and so forth. What? Did somebody say something? That must be the Zephyr must have cut out again because I heard myself there for a split second. Here's Gloria Borger last night, Anderson Cooper, 222. We've been told from sources who've been interviewed by Mueller that they were asking, among other things, when exactly Donald Trump decided to run for the presidency, how the Miss Universe pageant was financed, and also why two potential deals to brand a Trump Tower in Moscow fell through. We even this. spoke with one source who said that he was asked whether there were Russians hanging around the offices at Trump Tower. And the source said, no, there weren't any. What the special counsel's office is trying to do is just really figure out where this relationship between Donald Trump and the Russians is, or if there is one at all. Now, folks, there's only one way that Ms. Borger has any idea of any of this. And that is if somebody in the Mueller gang is leaking to her. And there's no question. How else would she know this? I mean, these specifics. A deal to brand a Trump Tower in Moscow fell through. Man, these Russians. Can you imagine how smart these guys are? These Russians, back when Trump is running the Miss USA pageant, he's flying the most beautiful girls in the world all over the country, all over the world, so that he can introduce them to his buddies. And the Russians, when Trump's entourage shows up, the Russians must have known that Trump was going to run for president. And the Russians must have known that they could engage in practices and behavior that would ensnare Trump and give him trouble on down the line. What a bunch of really bright guys the Russians are. Look at what they knew that nobody else knew.
And then we got the steel dossier when Trump was there with the U.S. Miss USA pageant. That's when he hired the whole prostitutes to show up at the hotel room and urinate on the bed. So this news was so big. This news was so exciting. CNN could not contain it within its own boundaries. They had to go out there to Jurassic Park. They went out at feeding time and they found an old journalist dinosaur, Carl Bernstein. They put him on a leash. They dragged him inside and asked him to comment on all this. These same attorneys that Gloria and others, myself, have talked about, some of them now have concluded that what Mueller is doing, among other things, is he is going to present a vast narrative, a report of the Trump family, Donald Trump, President Trump, the Trump Organization, Russia, and the business dealings of the family, the organization, and the internecine dealings of those people with Russians, ethno-Russians, and how American <clears throat> policy, presidential policy might have been affected or might not be affected. The President of the United States seems absolutely oblivious to the danger here. And this is part of the narrative. It's all yeah. fitting together in what Mueller is trying to do. But the extent of criminality, we don't know. See, there you go. And that's in every story, in every report, you get something along the lines of the only thing we don't have here is any evidence. And that's what Bernstein is saying here. Well, the extent of criminality, we don't know. Carl, you don't know anything. There isn't any evidence of any Trump culpability, crime collusion, as it pertains to the election. Now they're looking into Trump's business practices prior to 2016. You know that they're going to find something. They're gonna, they could find something on anybody. They could make it up. They could do anything they want. They can get somebody to flip and say that they knew that Trump did this or did that. They're going to get something. And they are hell-bent on getting it. And they don't care. I'm, I'm telling you, they don't care about Manafort. They don't care about Page. They don't care about Gates. They don't care about it. They care about Trump. All of this is still aimed squarely at Donald Trump. And it is for one reason he had the audacity, period. He had the audacity to win. And then there's some other things. They don't like his mannerisms. He's not sophisticated enough. He doesn't have the proper pedigree. He is an embarrassment to refined people, the refined people of the Washington establishment. Even though he is implementing an agenda that many in the establishment happen to love, support, and agree with, and have said so all of their lives, they still hate Trump and want him gone. So it's never been more obvious ruling class versus country class, establishment versus plebes, but they're not going anywhere. The Democrats are relying on this to be their primary vehicle for victory in the 2018 midterms. And there is going to be something. Mueller is going to have something. And 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 Muchel Maybell Obama, her book is going to come out in November. Now, you know damn well there are going to be excerpts and they're going to be they're going to be interviews and so forth. All of this is designed to transfer control of the House of Representatives to the Democrat Party for the express purposes of moving forward on impeachment. It hasn't changed. It isn't going to change. And all of this, this the, the, the story about the shooting in Parkland, Florida, e virtually every story that involves the Democrat agenda is focused as a laser on the, the, the premise here of getting rid of Trump. That is what practically every news story the drive-by media focuses on really is about and where it is ultimately. Grab audio sound by number 25. Oh, hang on. Just, just to get this out of the way, this is me from last June. June 16th of last year on this program. Donald Trump must be destroyed simply because he's there.
Donald Trump has to be taken out. He has to be destroyed and ruined politically, and if they can, financially. Make no mistake that that's an objective, too. You can read between the lines the latest leaks of the highly respected and uh, immensely uh, respected Robert Mueller, the independent counsel, going after Trump's money, going after Jared Kushner. They are not going to leave one stone unturned in their effort to demolish, to ruin, to destroy Donald Trump. They want to obliterate the star. They want to create a figure of great shame and embarrassment, and they want to take away from him all of his achievements, including his money. Yep, made that prediction six months ago. Well, that was coming up on nine months ago. Well, let's say eight. But it was a long time ago. And I'm just reminding you because the news is leaked. Gloria Borger at CNN thinks she's got a hot story that Mueller is looking at Trump's finances pre-2016. There's none of this. That ought to surprise you. Now, I don't get leaks. I don't have any leaks. I don't know what these guys are doing because somebody tells me. Like Gloria Borger and the rest of these people in the drive-bys, these clowns, they survive on leaks and press releases and who knows what. I don't get any of that because I don't cultivate these people. I don't talk to anybody. Folks, I'm probably the least conversant person in media. I probably talk to fewer people in a day. I talk to fewer people in a week than most media people talk to in a week, a day. I don't talk to anybody. I rely on instinct, intelligence guided by experience, and in some cases, experience guided by intelligence. It works both ways. You have to know which one to be guided by during the specific circumstance. But this, to me, has been obvious. And they're going to try to destroy Donald Trump. That has always been the objective even before the special counsel was formed. And it's for no other reason than he won. The audacity of winning. He had the audacity to mean it when he ran for president. That's the big deal. And then all the other things, the advancement of his agenda, the success he's having, well, that's just icing on the cake. That 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 just makes it double down important he's got to go do you realize what's happening here if you put it down in strict basic terms somebody who has never been in politics somebody who has never run for office somebody who'd never won an election runs for president and wins and in one year enacts 65 percent of his agenda as laid out during his campaign, including a relentless, not stopping assault on illegal immigration. And in the process, look at what Trump is causing. Look at what he's exposing. Look at this mayor out in Oakland, California, Libby Schaff. Look at what he is making the left do. The left is so enraged and so panicked over every Trump success story that this mayor of Oakland is actually warning illegal aliens that live in Oakland how to avoid immigration and customs enforcement agents doing their roundups for deportation. The mayor is aiding and abetting criminals and helping them avoid federal agents. All of this being done under the, the, the concept of the sanctuary city, which is a subset of the sanctuary state. Now, this is causing people who otherwise don't know the truth about liberals and liberalism to see them as they really are in action. They're seeing the lawlessness. But more importantly, a lot of people are seeing that the Democrat Party cares more about illegal immigrants than they do American citizens, be they African-American, be they lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, whatever. 
All of these people who believe the Democrat Party cares about them, looking out for them, running interference for them, look at what they're learning. Look at what Trump is exposing. Look at what Trump has already exposed about the operations of the deep state. That is the administrative state of unlimited bureaucrats who are able to rule over this country without having to pass a single law, without having to ever be elected. That's really what the deep state is. It's not just a bunch of intelligence people, but it's the entire bureaucracy made up of career leftists predominantly. And nobody knows who they are. And they can issue regulations from any department they want, the EPA, the uh, FDA, wherever they are. They can issue regulations which harm and punish law-abiding citizens, making it tougher to accomplish construction projects or any other kind of task. But they're not elected. There is no recourse. Trump is attacking and is succeeding in canceling a bunch of their regulations and targeting future regulations. When it comes to trade deals, Trump is on the way to unraveling a bunch of bad trade deals. Everything he said he was going to do from a guy who's never done it before. They can't allow this. They being the Washington establishment, they can't allow some guy not part of the club with no experience to come in here and make this kind of an immediate positive change like the tax bill. The Washington establishment has benefited tremendously from convincing the American people that real change is not possible. It's too hard. It takes too long. It costs too much money. And so, therefore, we go through campaigns and candidates promise this and promise that, but nothing really changes. The Government never gets smaller. The budgets never get smaller. Entitlement programs get bigger. More and more people end up dependent on the federal government every year. Except this year. Food stamp usage is way down. A number of other entitlement programs are on the decline. And a guy who's never done it before has shown in a year that it can be done. Donald Trump has been more has done more to expose the game played by the Washington establishment. He's got to go. And not only that, he's got to be ruined as he goes. He has got to be thoroughly discredited. Now, they know they can do it. Look at the 80s. I use this as an example frequently. The 1980s, we saw similar economic growth through similar tax cuts. We saw massive reductions in interest rates therefore making homes more affordable. We saw basically an economic boom. We also saw the seeds being planted that would bring down the evil Soviet Union and Soviet-sponsored communism. And people lived through it. And yet, a mere four years later, in 1992, when Bill Clinton's running for president, he wins on the notion that we're living in the worst economy in the last 50 years. They were able, the media, the deep state, whatever you want to call them, the establishment, were able to totally eliminate from people's memories how good things were in the 1980s. And so similar things are going to happen here. These achievements of Donald Trump's and these all-out assaults that he's making, that he promised he would make, on the do-nothing Washington establishment, they can't be allowed to be seen as success stories. And Trump cannot be allowed to be seen as competent. So this effort to get rid of Donald Trump has been joined by a lot of people. In fact, there are Republican conservative never-Trumpers in this Get Rid of Trump movement who are actually seeing lifelong dreams of theirs implemented. Policy things I'm think, talking about. Bill Crystal, I mean, we go through the list of names. They are seeing things they have advocated policy-wise being won. They've seen them being implemented, and yet they are seething. 
because Trump is the guy doing it. They've only been trying for how many years? 50? How many years of effort gone into defeating the establishment or the Democrats or whatever? Here's a guy who's never done it before, never once run for office, doesn't even come from the background, the networking to get you in position to run for president. Here he runs, he wins. Not only that, he defeats the chosen one, Hillary Clinton. He defeats what they thought was a landslide lock. And so they're not going to stop. And every Trump success angers them even more. This large and invisible administrative state exists in direct conflict with the representative republic that our founders established. And Trump is attacking it, and he is succeeding. So now looking into Trump's finances before he ran 2016, looking for collusion between Trump and Russia during the Miss USA pageant. And all these other stories, the, the shooting at the school and the attack on the NRA and uh, all the protests of Trump's so-called travel bans, all of this is organized and it is purposeful, and it is aimed at doing great damage to Trump. Okay, so Snurdly told me about this right before the 2.30 Eastern time break. He was watching PMSNBC in there. See, they have three monitors in there. They can watch, I only have two in here. Well, no, I've got three, but one of them's the ditto cam. You know, I have to see what I look like. And I don't care. To, I don't. I don't want to watch MSNBC. Don't. Don't. I'm not complaining about. It. I'm just snurdling. Was watching. You won't believe what they're saying about the Mueller investigation. They're wondering whether Trump knew about the stolen emails before. So I went digging. NBC politics breaking news. Mueller's team has been asking witnesses. Questions about whether Trump knew in advance that Democrat emails had been stolen and whether he was involved in their strategic release, according to multiple people familiar with the probe. And they, of course, are unnamed. Now, this has to be related to WikiLeaks. I don't know if this is the Podesta emails then uh, I guess it, it, it could be both. But what apparently Mueller is trying to deduce, you see, uh, Podesta's emails ended up on WikiLeaks, which means we all saw them. And the hacked emails from the Democrat National Committee. And so Mueller is scrounging around you talk about wandering aimlessly, looking for something. That's exactly what this is. He apparently is trying to find out if Trump knew those emails had been stolen. And thus, was it Trump who released them to WikiLeaks? I hate being right about some of the stuff that I'm right about. I would love to be wrong about it. I am not wrong about this whole thing. This is a gigantic fishing expedition. There isn't any evidence yet. They don't even have a crime that they are pursuing. This is open-ended, and they, they can literally make up crimes that Trump may have violated, and then they can go pursue them. And all they have to do is leak stuff like this. Special Counsel Robert Mueller investigating whether or not Donald Trump knew that the Democrat emails had been stolen. In fact, it worked with somebody to release them before. All they have to do is float that crap into the mainstream media sewer. And it ends up everywhere. As, did you hear the latest what Trump might have done? 
And this is how they do it. This is a fascinating piece. By the way, I got to take a break. There's a fascinating piece by a former FBI agent in TheHill.com that explains how Mueller is doing this. And it's it's pretty good, pretty interesting. Let me take a brief time out. We'll come back in just a second here. A, um, a story here that I, I'm going to have to postpone till tomorrow. Women report more rudeness at work from other women. Other women are rude much more than men are. That doesn't surprise me. In fact, I've known that since I was 16, and that hasn't changed. Okay, James Davidson is a was an FBI special agent for 23 years. He investigated major crimes in Texas and California. He served in Ukraine, Israel, and Washington. He's now the CEO of Vendy, V-E-N-D-Y, Silicon Beach Technology Startup. His piece is how Robert Mueller pursues lying under oath. And it is a story based on the Flynn. Now, now, Michael Flynn was interviewed by Peter Stroke, and Peter Stroke said he didn't lie. James Comey read the transcript. Yeah, Flynn didn't lie. Washington Post read the transcript of the interview with Flynn. Yeah, listen, he didn't lie here. And yet, Mueller charged him with lying. So this agent, former agent, ex- attempts to explain how this happens with Mueller. To better understand the Mueller tactics, let's look at a typical scenario in a Mueller system to see how accusations of lying were used. Here's a hypothetical. When an agent made a headline-grabbing appearance at a dinner party with a guest list that included someone connected to the defendant in a case that the agent was supervising. A conflict of interest was suggested. So the FBI began a disciplinary case to find out if this agent needs to be reprimanded. Well, let's say that Mueller wanted the option to fire this agent even if the facts didn't support the agent being fired. To make this possible... After an investigation, the centerpiece of which would be the agent's testimony, a proposal would be made by Mueller charging Smith with lying. The charge would hinge on something as indistinct from each other as the color scarlet and the color red. Now, I want you to read this piece. It's much easier to follow when you read it because you'll you'll have to read a paragraph again to understand this. We'll link to it. At uh, RushLimbaugh.com. It's the Hill.com. Scarlet's red. That's no lie. Here's, here's how the charge would be worded according to this agent. Here's how Mueller might get this agent for lying when he didn't. When asked to describe the vehicle that you drove to the dinner party, you said the vehicle's color is red. However, the manufacturer says the color is scarlet. Since you attended a university whose official color is scarlet, you should have known the difference between scarlet and red. I therefore charge you with lying under oath. And if found to be true, you'll be dismissed from the FBI. So in this example, this agent who goes to dinner and there is a defendant there that the FBI is pursuing, he doesn't talk to the defendant, but it's an apparent appearance of conflict. Mueller wants to fire the agent, but the agent didn't do anything wrong. So in the interview of the agent, he asked the agent what color car he drove. Uh, Car is red. Manufacturer says it's scarlet. You lied to me. This is an agent in the FBI writing about potential techniques that Mueller uses, not the FBI, that Mueller has used to nail people for lying under oath. Remember, the premise here is to explain how in the world can three people who looked at the Flynn interview conclude he didn't lie, and yet Mueller charged him with lying. And so the example, Scarlet is red. You told me your car's red. The manufacturer says it's Scarlet. You should know that. You probably do know that. You're fired. We'll link to it at RushLimbaugh.com so you can peruse it. But that's the kind of stuff that the special counsel can do. If they can't get you for anything, create the process crime where you lie to them during an investigation. But this business of Trump and this 
now deciding to look at whether Trump knew the Democrat emails were going to. If Mueller hasn't done that, I mean, has Mueller even examined the DNC servers to see if they were hacked in the first place? We don't know that the FBI's even done that. Mueller, if he's just now getting around to asking if Trump had anything to do with the DNC emails, that was supposed to be one of the main points of this whole thing. He's just now getting around to it?